Belchester, England. The rustle of the wind, the gentle rushing water, the crunch of fallen leaves under his boots, familiar as his own heartbeat. He has been following this trail for nearly two days, subtle but unmistakable the procession of dozens of sets of feet through the undergrowth, maybe more. The knife hangs heavy at his waist, he hitches his belt up for the thousandth time, never daring to relax. An ambush could be around any corner behind any log or trunk. There, in a divot, the gnawed cores of apples, plums, reddish streaks have been left behind on the rocks where they've wiped their hands clean. They're fresh, getting closer. Another hour passes, he crests a hill, comes suddenly upon this quarry. Two dozen of them, erecting makeshift shelters and building fires, the clearing they've chosen is small but suitable, and the arrangement of goods tells him they plan to stay. His hunch was right. This must be intentional. The rage welling within him makes him grit his teeth so hard they nearly crack. Bloody hell. Slowly, quietly, he backs down the hill and returns the way he came. Nothing good will come from confronting them now. Not by himself. Loath as he is to admit, he'll need some help. Parallel Universes Bureau, Volume 1, Episode 1, A Charming British Village. Pretty. Reminds me of Hogwarts. Case file pub. We'll just do that. Location Belchester, England. A requester Albert Knight. POI Orion. Status Mark III. Wow, that is beautiful. The sharp blare of a horn shocks me out of my days. I watch from the platform as the train I've just exited begins to roll away. Here I finally am in this small, unremarkable village nestled deep in the Cotswolds. To shake off the sluggishness of the long trip, I check my reflection in a nearby window. Now we finally get to choose ourselves. Type 1. Ah, I see it. There are all your types. Hairstyles. Outfits. Just the two, trousers or a skirt. Is this the appearance you wish to have? Yes. I puff out of breath as I examine my annoyed reflection. Had I any choice in the matter, I would have not accepted this case. So much on my plate, so many open files, and I'm waiting for a rendezvous who is now 15 minutes late. I take a deep draft of the almost unbearably fresh air and feel a little better. How long since I last left London? Five years? I shift my luggage out of the way of two elderly travelers and exchange good mornings. Just where is this man? As I scan the area, something odd catches my eye, a hunched creature behind the wall watching me. The choices you're about to make will affect the plot. Is that a scare the creature approach quietly? Acting as if I am admiring the landscape, I move closer to the wall. 
It could just be a child, but that odd little face. There, a few swift steps abruptly reveal my onlooker to me. Dobby, is that you? You, what are you? The creature flinches violently and squashes the piece of fruit he's clutching in his hand. Before I can stop it, the thing scuttles away and disappears into a nearby hedge. You very odd indeed. A few minutes pass before a man ambling down the road notices me and approaches. Agent Lee. He shoots me an easy, lopsided smile. Isla Lee. Mr. Knight, I presume? Call me Albert. He shakes my hand with a firm grip, looking me straight in the eye. Welcome to Belchester. I look down the road to the town proper, where an imposing brick building in the 17th century style presides over a three-line tree square. People are lounging outside the pub, enjoying the sunny weather, playing with their children in the grass, and doing their shopping. It's uncanny, the sort of place I thought only existed in children's books and period dramas. Save for the cars and traffic lights, I could have stepped 200 years back in time. Shall we? The little creature spying on me lingers in my mind. I ponder for a moment, deciding whether or not to address it. Is it just us two? As far as I'm aware. Only I saw someone looking at me over the fence while I was waiting. A brief description provokes an irritated sigh. Yes, I know him. We'll be having stern words later. Is he a friend, or should I be concerned? He's not a friend. He hesitates on the verge of saying more, and then thinks better of it. If you're with me, you don't need to be concerned. You won't be harmed. With that settled, we set off down the road. Thanks for responding so promptly. I've never had to call on your agency before, so I thought, uh... Not here. You never know who's listening. My tone must have been too sharp. Albert stung. Fall silent. There are eyes on us already. Probably just nosy villagers curious about a new face, but you can never be too careful. Right. Sorry. Well, my cottage do. It's on the other side of the village. I could do with a bit of a walk after the train ride. See the sights. There's not many of those in Belchester, but I hope you'll have a good time while you're here. Certain choices increase your stats. Empathy favors patience, open-hearted approach, whereas efficiency prefers a direct solutions-focused approach. Yes, well, a break would be nice. You do have a charming place here. It's not so bad sometimes. I must admit, that the village is lovely. Wide streets, beautifully preserved, buildings, and quiet. I'm so distracted taking it all in that I barely hear Albert address me. Sorry, what was that? I was just saying the work you do. My colleague did a little research. You're a senior field agent, right? The question is vague enough that I safely answer in public. Still, I flick a keen eye around to make sure nobody is eavesdropping before I respond. I am... So, why? Why did I take a case so far below my pay grade? He cocks his head, not agreeing or disagreeing. In a word, politics, my superiors insisted. Apparently, I needed a break. They would do me good to get out of the city, and since they couldn't legally force me to take vacation days, this is my working holiday. And I thought I was a workaholic. The bosses say jump. You say how high. I've got better things to do than enjoy a, a dose of rural charm. I catch myself and cringe. God, what kind of bitter old crone do I sound like? Ugh, no offense. None taken. Our nods down the road. A stone bridge arches over a slowly moving river on the other side of the square, the path beyond stretching across rolling fields. None much farther now. I wish we would have known more about ourselves before we chose the first two choices. Diamond choice, got it. I wonder idly about this place. It seems like a jewel, yet why are streets so quiet? Ask. I wonder, Albert, where are the tourists? There are some around. Why do you ask? 
I suppose I expected to see more. It's spring. This place is picturesque. Your main street should be uh, thronging with people looking for a spot of country life. Ah, yeah. I suppose so. His hands lined into his pockets, glancing around the square. We've always been a quiet place. Part of that is intentional, being so close, you know. He trails off meaningfully. It does make sense now that he says it. Of course, the last thing you want is people wandering around the area, stumbling upon the things they shouldn't stumble upon. I'm glad you understand. He jerks his head towards the town hall. The current mayor is still in the dark, but mayors in the past did their part to keep any knowledge of you-know-what from spreading too far. We, too, did it. Uh, there's rumors, like anywhere else, but people just consider the what they hear fairy tales. And herd mentality does the rest. Imagine what they might think if they knew the full truth of the matter. You've been doing a good job, then, you and your colleagues. I don't know if I call them colleagues, but thanks. He rolls his shoulders, seeming to find an extra burst of energy somewhere. Ready to keep moving? Yes, let's crack on. The day is mild, the sunshine pleasing, the lanes we traverse are even and not too hilly, perfect for a brisk afternoon stroll. Yet nothing good can last. As we walk, a young boy tears past on a bicycle, shouting something inarticulate at my companion. Albert has to throw himself out of the way, banging painfully into the wall, running uh, alongside the lane. Bloody kids. Friend of yours? One of the perks of village life. Everybody knows everybody. You're, you'll be welcome reprieve if you stick around, Agent. At least there will be one person not sick of the sight of me. Will there... Hmm. I'm sure you're not that unpopular. You'd be surprised. What does that mean? Just one of those things. Never you mind. I raise my eyebrows, but he doesn't elaborate. A turn on the lane brings us to a small cottage at the foot of a hill. A low stone wall rings Albert's home. Back the way we came sits a stone church at the top of the hill, clearly still in a regular use. Judging by the architectural style, it must be at least a few centuries old. He nods at the church as he unlatches the gate, holding it open for me to enter. My official job is groundskeeper. Keep the graves tidy, grass short, that sort of thing. Indeed. The hill is marked at regular intervals with graves and fenced in by a thicker stone wall. The monuments stand silent, shadowed by the bur boughs of great trees, creating a thoroughly peaceful scene. You must enjoy working there. He shrugs. It's easy. Nobody bothers me. Could be worse. There's a calm here I'd forgotten could exist. The noise, the dirt, the chaos of London, I love it, but it wears on the nerves, especially when you see its ugly side every single day. A fantasy of village life is easy to conjure, the country lanes, rolling fields, peaceful days, and fire side nights. A few close friends, a tight-knit community. It's like something out of any Blighton. Someone clears their throat. Uh, I look away from the church and see a young woman standing expectantly in the cottage doorway. Is this her? I slept. My, uh, colleague, Henrietta Kim. I set down my bags and offer a handshake. Her arms remain folded in response to my gesture. Daddy is fine. Ah, one of these types. I should... <laughs> Will be nice. Hello, Nanny. I like your necklace. Oh. Her fingers run over the stone, hanging from a sturdy black cord looped around her neck. Thanks. It's new. Always the way with the new things, isn't it? We want to show them off as soon as we can. Yeah. Albert doesn't. Nettie was thrown off guard by your kindness. Albert doesn't try hard to hide his grin, and the reception must have been expected. I'll get the kettle on. Wait. 
He slips indoors before I can stop him, leaving me stranded with Nettie. Yep, social awkwardness. Nice day, isn't it? Better than any old London Grey, any day, anyway. I suppose. I'm gonna have to admit defeat, but for now, best to gather my thoughts and head inside. Clean, practical, sparsely decorated, everything about Albert's cottage screams bachelor. Most of the furniture is a solid wood, varnished to perfection. The chairs are sturdy, the cushions plump, and look so comfortable that I fear I'd never get up again if I sat in one of them. Further back is a heavy oak dining table, piled with books and notes. Nanny makes a beeline straight for the table, lowering her head over a laptop without another word. Mercifully, Albert returns with three mugs of tea before the silence can stretch to awkwardness and we take our seats. The well-loved dining chairs and warm drink are small pleasures. I sip my tea and we pass a little small talk before I feel the time is right to get down to business. For the record, I'll make some official introductions. I tap my watch. I am Isla Lee, the senior field agent of the Parallel Universes Bureau. S-A-M-I. Please record all further proceedings until deactivation. Who? I smile. It's a rare chance for a bit of showmanship. My digital assistant. Take a look. I extend my wrist and allow the holographic image to bloom forth. Alright, so we have a barn owl. Tomcat. Android is the free one. Don't get me wrong, it's an android, but... You would charge 55 for the cat. Curse you! Listen, you know I was gonna get it. Come on, I love cats. How to voice this damn thing. You know what? Screw it. Greetings. I am Super Advanced Machine Intelligence. Sammy. What? You have sentient AI? Not sentient, just very advanced. A Sammy is a bit special. Thanks to an intra-realm network I cannot explain, pub agents are able to communicate across realms. Why can't you explain it? Because I haven't the faintest how it works. Uh, not on the technical level, anyway. Even senior agents don't have access to that information. I sense Natty wants to ask a lot more, but I briskly get us back on track. If you could please uh, both provide your names and jobs, we can begin. Albert Knight, guardian of the Belchester Gate. I called for pub assistance. You forgot your job. Henrietta Kim, researcher and assistant to Albert Knight. Thank you. Now, how much do you know about our bureau and the nature of our work? A little. Albert runs a hand over his chin, avoiding my gaze. Nanny knows more than me. I'd better cover the basics, then. Talk about... Let's begin. Parallel Universes, Universes Bureau. In a word, pub agents are peacemakers. We have branches in every major city across the world operating in secret to manage and contain supernatural occurrences. Pub works with a local government, but is not obligated to obey them. You may consider them high level of specialist experts to be called on in specific cases. And before you ask, yes, I have heard every possible going to the pub joke there is. I wasn't gonna say it. So what does a pub agent do? Our goal is the management of affairs between us, the denizens of mundane realm and those of the supernatural realm and beyond. He put on glasses, the cat put on glasses, a man. Diplomacy is preferred, but if force or guile are needed, an agent has discretion to use their best judgment to resolve the situation. They're... they are not mindless monsters, as you well know. Uh, they're thinking beings as deserving of respect and fair treatment as you or I. Debatable. Be nice, Natty. No, she's right. Not all residents of the supernatural realm are reasoning creatures. There are... Uh, that's where the force bit comes in. I raise a finger to emphasize my point. Let me be clear, we are not enforcers nor hitmen. We are not an army. If peace is possible, then peace is what we strive to achieve. And what do you think about the situation? Is peace possible? 
I'll let you know as soon as I work out what this is. You talk about your role. As a senior field agent, I work around the upper middle of pub hier hierarchy. I respond to calls, attend the scene, resolve cases as best as I can. Ideally, everyone comes to a uh, understanding and nobody gets hurt. Curiosity flickers across Nettie's face, illuminated from below by her laptop screen. Ideally, so you've failed before? Anyone who has succeeded has failed first, Miss Kim. You know what I mean. Have you gotten injured on the job? Albert opens his mouth to uh, admonish her, but I wave him to silence. It's been a long time. Let me think. Agent Isla has been hospitalized twice. One occasion required surgery. Minor cosmetic surgery has removed all scars from her body, save for one across her right thigh. Thank you, Sammy, for telling us that. Thank you, Sammy. Very detailed. You are welcome, Agent. <laughs> He's got a party hat. <laughs> Not bad for such a long career. I have my moments. What uh, about really big failures? Has anyone ever died on your watch? I don't respond, letting the question hang in the air and dissolve. All you need to know is that I am experienced and can handle myself. So you know how to fight. All pub agents are required to undergo self-defense classes. It's a last resort, but if we do our job right, the fight never happens at all. Talk about the realms. As you know, most people are only aware of our world. The mundane realm it lies at the bottom of the strata of layers, which makes up reality. Closest to us is the supernatural realm. It generally shares our topography and where all supernatural creatures are born. Most legends are and mythology owe their beginnings to this place. Goblins, genies, pixies, mermaids, those all come from the supernatural realm. Many wish to make their home in the mundane. This isn't disallowed, and we cannot hope to stop it entirely, but it has decided long ago that this realm and its creatures should remain secret. That's your job, keeping the secret. In a nutshell, not so different to you, Mr. Knight. What about other realms? Ah, yes, above the supernatural realm is the unconscious realm. This realm makes us an atmosphere. You can visit it in your dreams, and it changes in accordance with the will of the dreamer. Very, very few can visit deliberately. Have you ever met anybody that could? Not personally, though I have had some odd encounters. What you'd call possession is usually the work of the unconscious realm. We communicate with them as best as we can. Our relations are cordial. We respect their desire to keep to themselves. Tension tightens my shoulders as I consider what m must inevitably come next. And then there's the Void Realm. That's space, right? In essence, the Unconscious Realm blocks any interaction with the Void Realm. Nobody has ever had contact with the Void beings that live up there. Well, nobody living. Albert shoots Natty a quizzical look. Why not? Space is void. Albert, no air, no gravity, no light. It's radiation-filled wasteland that pops us like balloons. Would you want to deal with that sort of thing that can survive those conditions? Well said, Nanny. I shoot her a quick smile. The less said about the void realm, the better. I'm quite happy to leave it alone myself. Talk about move on. The basics of my job in the pub itself. Uh, any further questions? Nettie has been listening, but her eyes never left the flickering hologram emanating from my watch. I notice belatedly the things that are obviously hers. Several thick books on British folklore, the laptop notebooks covered in writing and diagrams. A curious cat. I know how to tempt those. Go on, ask it a question. Nettie regards me dubiously, in her, but her interest is too fierce to suppress. Can you hear me, Sammy? I hear you. Describe your functions. My primary functions are communication and information management. Whatever information an agent requires, I can retrieve. It is in my databanks and the search the internet if it is not. My secondary function is that of a companion. A companion? 
Many agents use me as a confidant. I am their cheerful digital friend. I can see the question before it arrives. Do you? Sometimes it's good to have a sounding board. Agent Isla has logged several diary entries on my private server. Most contain conjecture about her colleagues and failed romantic encounters. Would you like to learn more? She certainly would not. Albert snickers over his teacup. Natty, blessedly, barely seems to have heard. Hmm. Her fingers reach slowly across the table. She obviously intends to examine Sammy more closely. I wouldn't mind, but pub rules firmly state that no one outside the pub should have direct access to Sammy's hardware or software. On the other hand, the goodwill could help a lot down the line. The authority as a pub agent is measured by expertise stats. Agents with low expertise will have trouble convincing people or being taken seriously. Even though I'm a senior agent. Pull my arm away, let her examine it. Pull my arm away. <clears throat> One expertise. Nettie's a surprise quickly shifts to indignation. I wasn't gonna break it. I know, sorry. The tech itself is highly confidential, and so I'm afraid I can't let you touch it. Is that true, Sammy? It is. Apologies, Miss Kim. I like how the cat changes, depending on mood. You can still talk to it, just... Hands off. Got it. I fear I've offended her, and still she seems to understand. Having sat quietly for most of the discussion, drinking his tea, Albert now straightens to his full height. I got a question. How much do you know about the creatures in this area? I know they resemble the local folklore of fairies, pixies, brownies, and so on. Right. Most of them are wild creatures, but those who are self-aware as humans have their own society, their own ruler. I can only describe it as a fairy court. Their lord rules over a fair portion of southern England. It's him that's causing our current trouble. A fairy lord, is it? Yes, Lord Orion. I check that Sammy is still recording. This is where the work begins. Despite myself, I feel a little excited. I've lost count of how many cases I've taken on, but a brand new one never fails to spark joy. Who is Lord Orion? Uh, like I said, the Lord of the Belchester Court. We call it that for convenience, since it's located nearest Belchester. The fairies just call it the Court. Do you know him very well? Nettie shakes her head. Albert, in contrast, looks exhausted. I thought I did. I've known him all my life. He rolled during my guardianship at the game, during my mother's uh, before me, my grandfather's too. How long has he been in power? Mentions of Lord Orion in the Belchester area date back approximately 150 years. There's a grim twist to his lips as he mentally calculates. The earliest records I have are some remnants of a diary that my great great grandmother uh, she mentions uh, Orion in his early days of power when she took roll of a uh, knight but the exact timing is unclear goodness yeah not exactly Johnny come lately he's got longevity and the strength to back it up his influence must be extensive Nettie shakes her hand he keeps a court of four small with almost all the power and then all, all in his hands. A lot of supernatural realm in his domain remains wild, but there's no doubt where the power lies. Not that I would know. Albert avoids Nettie's penetrating glance. I know the question is reductive, but uh, is he a good lord? He keeps the peace. I'll say that much. I sense there's more to this story, and still, it does no good to only get one side. I'll find out when I meet him soon enough. What should I ask? What has he been doing? Is It must be serious for you to call pub intervention, I think. I pause and tap my watch. Sammy, has the Knight family ever called for assistance before? No records of calls for assistance found. All I have in my database are regular reports from the Knight family detailing the status of the region. We're, uh, all a bit pig-headed, 
I'm afraid. We like to do things ourselves. What's changed now that you're finally asking for assistance? Nothing. In the grand scheme, I just have a bad feeling. I sip my tea while he gathers his thoughts. Usually Lord Orion respects the boundaries between supernatural and mundane. Creatures from his side slip through smaller cracks occasionally. I deal with them before they can reach town. I have no issue with that. It's my job. I don't begrudge him those oversights. He can't expect to be conspect expected to control every single being in his domain. The way he speaks makes me think he's talked to himself in his viewpoint a few times before. Regardless, I let him continue. What he's doing now, it goes beyond that. How so? I've come across settlements, small ones, but undeniably settlements. These aren't single creatures slipping through the cracks. This is intentional. I've even found larger groups trying to pass through the gate. They all say the same thing. Lord Orion said it was fine to move into the mundane. And did he? <sighs> That's what I don't know. I can't see it as anything but an attempt to undermine me and prepare some kind of invasion into the mundane realm. What? Why on earth would he do that? Your guess is as good as mine. What is your relation? Albert smiles affably. Well, I'm the guardian of the gate. Most cases occur when the creatures from the supernatural realm slip through the cracks between the layers. These cracks tend to heal on their own and are large enough to admit more than a few creatures. A permanent open between realms is a rarity, and a proper gate is rare still. Albert here is the guardian, the knight, responsible for watching this gate. Your family has been doing this for... as many generations as I can recall. As long as there's been a Belchester gate, the knights have been here to guard it. Gate guardians are scattered all across the world. It, being the family business, is a bit odd, but, well, England does love its ancient traditions. A noble profession. The noblest. She doesn't buy that. Do you get on? You and Orion? I thought we did. I was under the impression we'd gained some level of mutual respect. The tone in his voice tells me the way this weighs heavily on his mind, upon her saying something comforting before deciding against it. Has he been particularly antagonistic? Some rulers of the supernatural realms are much more vicious than others. Not really. He likes pushing the envelope and toying with us, but it's never progressed to this level before. It's a lot to ponder. I lean back in the chair and mull it over for a few moments, draining the last of my tea. I see why you called this in, and I'm glad you did. It took some doing. I'm not that against outside help. Aren't you? I sense an old argument and switch off Sammy's recording function. Albert is right about one thing. Cross-realm immigration is not strictly against the rules. Many cases deal with supernatural beings hiding or living in London, making their bestest ways the best they can. Some are beasts who need to be put down. Some predate unknown or upon unknowing humans and need to be stopped. Most are regular folk who simply want to get by and find some peace in a difficult world. Larger scale relocation is a different matter. You can hide a few ghouls or fairies amongst the humans, but full settlements of supernatural creatures make for a problem nobody wants to have. Directly flaunting his power in Albert's face, too. My fingernail taps lightly against the side of my cup. A fairy lord. I've never dealt with fairies before. They don't do well in the city. A fairy lord. Agent. Hmm? You still with us? I come back to myself sharply. Sorry. Lost in thought. It's alright. Do you have any more questions? Well, do you have any more... Uh personal information about Orion. What do you mean, personal? Well, what is he like? Who are his court? How is he as a person? Well, he's not a person, for one thing, no matter what he might seem like. His suspicion of my interest flushes me with embarrassment, an embarrassment which quickly turns to irritation. You will know there are all types of supernatural creatures, Mr. Knight. Their form changes with the folklore and legends of the region. Is he jealous? Severe? Like Oberon? Is he um, 
capricious like Puck? Is he kind like the fairy godmother? I cannot help you if you uh, don't have any information to go on. What a severe response. I catch myself and breathe, lowering my voice to calm. Anything would help. Well, yes and no. Yes and no what? Yes, he's severe. He's certainly capricious. He takes his job seriously. The law of the jungle abides in the supernatural realm, but generally his people are protected. They're able to live in peace. However, he's still a fairy. Mockery, trickery, illusion. Or uh, their stock and trade. He loves making a mockery out of me and anybody else he deems worthy of punishment. So, a good and just ruler, but perhaps not a good person. Not a good person. A fairy. Don't let him trick you into thinking otherwise. I'm ashamed to say that all of that forms an intriguing picture in my mind. Does he, er, take a human form? Generally. Lost in his irritation, Albert takes a moment to catch on to my point. Are you asking if he's handsome? Just out of professional interest, attractive, charismatic leaders often have very loyal followers. I suppose, if you like that sort of thing. As for his followers, he keeps three ambassadors to liaise with the varied groups of supernatural creatures and a cadre of pixies and brownies as court servants. Or do you want to hear more about his jawline, Agent? No, I think that will be quite sufficient. You're curious about Orion. Despite the distraction that does give me the measure of man, a serious ruler with a wicked side. Part of me imagines the ethereal fairy lords of my childhood books, unknowable and serene in their infinite grace, and other images, cradle snatchers and child nabbers ruled entirely by their uh, id. You'll meet him soon enough. He's already accepted an audience, so I've uh, no doubt he'll hear you out at least. Albert smacks his leg and stands up. That's enough sitting around, I think. Let's get you settled. Settled in? Well, I thought you might like somewhere closer at hand to stay, rather than walking to and from every day. Or, uh, so I, I got the little cottage out back ready for you. I glance out the window to my right. A smaller cottage indeed sits ne near the fence line of Albert's property. It's not much, but saves on hotel fees and avoids a lot of awkward questions about who I am, what I'm doing in town, but it's also best if a pub agent can move in secrecy. The gesture is unexpected, thoughtful, sweet, which brings into a depressing contrast how little unasked for kindness I usually receive in this line of work. I shake that thought away and nod. Thank you, Mr. Knight. That'll be great help. Great. Nettie, would you mind showing her the place Lord Orion says he'll receive us tomorrow? I believe... I'm briefly surprised by his deve this development. Oh, I thought we were going right there. <laughs> you know these types. Keeping people waiting is just another power play. Natty closes her laptop and stands. Come on. That puts an end to the conversation. I retrieve my bags where they were left and follow. The cottage that's been set aside for me is certainly a cottage, one room by the look of it with just enough space for a single person to live comfortably. Nettie retrieves a key from her pocket and unlocks the door. Here you go. Thank you. Hmm. A nice cottage. It's homey. Appear inside, a bed. Small sitting area, an even smaller kitchen. Modern appliances amongst antique furniture, comfortable and clean. I wouldn't mind living here. Anybody got a place like this? Seriously. Albert really did make an effort, didn't he? Nettie regards me in silence for some moments before speaking. You know, just because I pushed for Albert to call you doesn't mean that I want you here. That is as much isn't surprising, consider her cold reception. I restrict myself to a neutral. Oh? Yeah. He's handled this by himself for a long time. Now he has me. You might be an expert in London, but you don't know anything about Belchester. Not like we do. We've lived here our entire lives. Then why did you call me? It's a fair point. 
if grudly delivered. A lot of clients react poorly to outside authority. Confidence is often misinterpreted as superiority, thinking you're better than them. I don't intend to override their authority at all, but they f they're not to know that. I'll have to play nice to some degree. Maybe a vacation was a good idea. I suddenly feel exhausted. The long trip here has completely sapped my patience for this sort of thing. You know, Nanny... <clears throat> I'd like us to be friends. Really? The suggestion seems to genuinely novel to her. Really? Better to have a friend than not, right? Slowly, dubiously, she nods. I suppose so. Eddie is lowering her guard. Just a little. It's going to take more than a few sweet words to melt this one, though. I wonder, should I delve a little deeper? I think back and recall one particular promising detail. So, you're a researcher. Yep. My silence prompts her to elaborate. Ugh, I get so tired of living this spiel. I have a bachelor's degree in folklore mythology. Yes, it's a real degree. No, my parents didn't disown me. The get the question often, do you? Every time somebody asks, they say, I could do what I wanted, and this has always interested me, so I did. I didn't really expect to get a job with it. Maybe I'd stay in academia or become a teacher or something, but that job has a lot of... Nettie circles her hand vaguely. Paperwork. People. Ah. Yeah, so once I graduated with no real job prospects, I came back home to Belchester. Rented a room from some friends of uh, my parents in town and tried to get some part-time work. Another wave of her hand encompasses a length of time, which I'm sure she doesn't want to reflect on. I never thought I'd actually get to use all that knowledge. Wait, you didn't know about the supernatural realm before studying mythology? Not until recently. You hear and see things as a kid around here, but you know, nobody believes you. You figure it's just a kid's imagination. Anyway... I was taking a walk near the woods one night after coming home from the university and encountered some goblins. Things might have gotten ugly, but then Albert showed up and scared them off. We got to talking. He saw the use of my knowledge and offered me a job. Okay, so where does he get the money to pay you? I wait for more, but the story appears to be over. And you've been working for him ever since? Hmm, he's smart. But Albert needs someone to pour over the books and organize information for him while he's off being a, a man of action. That's me, researcher and assistant. I turn this new information over in my mind. Her withdrawn nature, subtle protectiveness makes a, a bit more sense now. You must be very grateful to him. Of course I'm grateful. He keeps... he gives me a decent paycheck, a, a job I like, and I only have to deal with one person. Well, two now. She hasn't quite made up her mind about me, nor I her, really. As we stand there looking at each other, she begins to idly fidget with her ring. Maybe I'll be fine. I don't know, but yeah. Albert lets me be myself and doesn't complain. Don't get that too often. All too rare, finding people who accept and like you, exactly you as you are. Mm-hmm. Well, Nanny, you seem very intelligent. That's because I am. It takes a second for the compliment to process. Wait, what do you mean by that? Just what I said. You studied your passion in a university, found a way to apply it in real life, and you did it without tying yourself to a job you can't stand. That's intelligence to me. Oh. Her mouth opens and closes again. I get the feeling she's not used to genuine compliments. You, you and me both. <laughs> Well, you too. I mean, I assume you like your job. Were you uh, hired straight out of university? Bob headhunters take their jobs very seriously. I had a similar experience, actually. A supernatural encounter in early life. Everyone said I made it up. Imagine my surprise when I got hired to deal with supernatural as a full-time job. It's hard sometimes. I get very tired, and I can't imagine doing anything else. I bet you're good at it. The return compliment is poorly delivered, but genuine. Before the atmosphere can get any more awkward, Nettie steps back. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. She retreats to Albert's cottage quickly. I lift my bags and shoulder, open the door, and watch her go with a strange warmth. You too. 
typically sharing a supernatural and like thing eh, people frown on nowadays that's why i just keep mine to myself the thought of unpacking after such a long day is unbearable i flop on the bed it's even more comfortable than it looks god all the information i've received whirls in my head lords guardians fairies gates is this what my bosses call a working holiday maybe i should have actually gone on leave no the suggestion nauseates me as soon as it passes through my mind. I, I want to get to work, and so I'm going to work. <clears throat> I roll on to my stomach and pull a pillow underneath my chin. Sammy? Yes, Agent Isla. Compile information from previous meetings into a short report and send it to my email. I'll look at it over again before sending the preliminary report to London. Understood. Do you require additional conversation at this part of time? I am available for a confident function. Not right now. All that was more than enough. Understood. The AI gets to work. I lay there until the stiff material of my jacket begins to bother me. Who knows how long I'm going to stay here. It could be resolved tomorrow, or it could stretch on for weeks. You can take a best guess, but... It's impossible to be certain. What I do know is that if I'm going to unwind and relax, I need to be wearing something a little more comfortable. Casual. Comfy. Cute. By all. Okay. Like how they have the hip jutted out, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm gonna go with casual. I, I see nothing wrong with it. Am I happy with this? Yes. Night arrives presently. Albert was considerate enough to stock the fridge, allowing me to throw together a simple dinner. It's rare to stay overnight for a case working in London. I always, uh, within a cab or tubes ride distance of my own apartment. I've lived in the same place for a decade now and made the, that place completely my own. Without the familiar surroundings of that little space, I find myself adrift. I leaf through a few pages of the book I had brought, and then abandon it. Ugh, no good. I can't concentrate. Despite the immense variety of the work, my schedule has always been rigidly defined. Work, home, work, again. What little social life I have is also work. People outside the Bureau ask too many inconvenient questions. Taken out of London, I realize just how much time I have been devoting to my job. My life's passion fulfilling besides but these are the thoughts i would usually chase away with more work there's always something to do except now on vacation no work is at hand well i've done well uh, built a career strong reputation a woman in her early 30s being the, this senior in the bureau's an impressive feat no matter how you look at it i should be proud i am proud but sometimes I ponder, turning in early, when a rattle from outside catches my attention. Oh, thank God for that. It sounds like something's trying to get into the bins. I barely pause long enough to slide on some garden shoes and before going out to see what it is. I don't know what I expected. Hurrying over, hurrying out into the night. Foxes, probably, instead. It's you again. It's you. Come here, Dobby. The creature flinches at the sudden swinging open door. Overbalancing, he crashes to the ground, spilling trash everywhere. No, oh, what a mess. Sorry, miss. Er, not at all. The poor thing begins gathering up all the spilled trash. I realize now he has a large black garbage bag with him. He must have been trying to throw the trash out rather than steal it. I didn't realize Albert let brownies hang around here. The brownie pulls his cap down, darting nervously glances. I search my mind for what I know about these little fellows. Sammy, uh, what are brownies? I already know. I don't want to know. You know, I'm just going to own this one. I have actually no clue what a brownie is. Like, if you were to say Woodland Fairy or other things, like, I know those. I've actually never heard of a brownie before. It's like the one you put in your mouth. <laughs> Sammy, what are brownies? Sammy activates at the sound of my voice. 
Brownies, household spirits common into England and Scottish folklore. They are believed to inhabit houses and barns. They clean and perform chores by night while the household is asleep, preferring to remain out of sight. They are easily offended and will be insulted if they feel taken advantage of. Common etiquette is to present brownies with a bowl of milk or cream for their services. If a brownie leaves a household, either from being gifted clothing or offended, he will take the prosperity of the household with him. Extreme cases result in a brownie turning into a bogart. Bogarts are... Ah, uh, thank you, Sammy, that's enough. It's obvious my attention is discomforting to the creature. Discomforting? Anyway, yet I cannot bring myself to look away. Brownies, like fairies, don't tend to make their homes in cities. What I see before me seems to have sprung straight out of the children's storybook. Stocky, squat, dressed in rags, battered cap, barely taller than a child. Negotiating the bins from such a height must be difficult. No wonder he was making such noise. Noise he continues to make, rustling and clanking the trash scattered around the yard. This will all be cleaned up soon, miss. Don't you worry none about it. That's very nice of you, uh... Colin, miss. Colin, okay. I really don't know what to make of this little fella. Something about the way he avoids my gaze goes beyond regular discomfort. My instincts tell me so. Then it comes back to me. The little creature that had been peering at me when I arrived in town, that sense of being watched all day long. This is him. I only got a quick glance earlier, but it's definitely him. Didn't I see you earlier, Colin, at the station? Me, miss, no, miss. Never been to a station in my life, miss. You're a poor liar, and I do not appreciate being lied to. I'm... I'm not. The hesitation says it all. I let him twist, literally removing his cap and wringing it in his hands. i just like to do a good job, miss. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Don't mind me and get on. I'll try and be quiet so you can get your beauty rest. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> Go on now, it's, it's getting late. I'm just gonna stand here and stare at you, Colin. <laughs> Our staring contest is broken by a heavy thread of stone path. Albert emerges tugging on his coat. I love. Is there something wrong with. A moment later, he notices the brownie and his expression hardens. Colin, what are you doing here? Sir Knight! Now there's somebody who really needs his beauty rest. <laughs> The steel in Albert's stare tapers off Colin's cackle fast. He bows his head low, nearly touching the floor. Sorry, sir. Lord's orders. Orion sent you here. Aye, sir. Is this little fellow I saw watching me at the station, Albert? I knew it. This is what he calls hospitality, is it? Albert looks like he's ready to hurl Colin straight over the fence. You know you're not allowed in town, Colin. What the hell were you thinking? I'm sorry, Sir Knight. I'm so sorry. Colin's bowl of his head lifts enough to steal a glance in my direction. Is this about me? Colin wrings his head further, nearly tearing the tattered fabric. I really can't say, miss. Oh, I think that you can. He... A change comes over Albert, he stands straighter, his shoulders squaring, flint and steel flicker in his glare, threatening the spark and the flame. Just the sight of his clenching fist is Colin trembling. Answer my question, Colin. Without laying a hand on him, Albert's overpowering presence breaks the flimsy dam of Colin's willpower. Her! He sent me to find out about her! Colin's quivering finger jabs directly at me. Why? She's no. He, he said he wants to know about her. I don't know more than that, Sir Knight, I swear. And he decided to do that by what? Having you dig through the trash? To dock me through the whole day? Lots of things you can find out about folk from the trash, miss. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> I haven't even thrown anything out yet. Being spied on before a day is past renders me uneasy. It's an effort to fold my arms and remain calm. Not exactly the best first impression that your lord is making, Colin. 
Mm, no, miss, as you say, miss. Albert looks between us. <sighs> You're taking this well. Uh, those that uh, know about the pub do tend to see us as boogie men. Your lord is no different, it seems. Not my lord, but never mind that. Albert advances a stab making call and squeal. Now, you little sneak thief. Please, mercy, sir knight. Hold on, Albert. He stopped short. Colin is doing no harm. He didn't find anything out, and he's not going to now. Slowly, with some effort, Albert relaxes his tense posture. You're right. It's your show. What do you want to do with him? I ponder that question. The tear in Colin's eyes is clear, mostly of Albert, who looks ready to hurl him into the nearest tree. I doubt this brownie has any more useful information. Some choices are timed. Think fast! Eh, I chase him away. An empty tin of beans lies near my foot. Having fallen from the bag of trash Colin had gathered, I snatch it up and lift my arm in a threatening gesture. Go on, you little snake, get out of here. Tell your lord what I think of being spied on. Before Colin can answer, I hurl the can. He glances off his head with the... Jesus woman, I thought... <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah, take your concussion of beans with you. He glances off his head with the lightest of blows, but even so, he screeches and throws himself back as if I'd struck him with a hammer. I watch as Colin nearly falling over his own feet, sprints back to the tree line and disappears. Albert approves of your methods. Good riddance. Ah, uh, you don't mind that I did that? Not at all. That little pest is always digging around. Alone, once more, Albert relaxes back into himself. Sorry, you had to deal with that. Does this sort of thing happen often? It shouldn't. Albert moves to the fence and squats down, running his fingers across the tightly packed stones. See, the wards have been damaged. Beg pardon? I place protective runes all around here. Weaker fairies, like Colin, shouldn't be able to enter without permission. But it looks like the weather's done a job on this one. Another job on the endless list, no doubt. Albert is silent as he studies the trees, shadowing the dim moonlight. I'll need to replace it. You never know what's going to come out of those woods. Sometimes there is a fork in the plot. You, the path you take depends on your earlier choices. Path of Empathy. I've seen enough to know his suspicion isn't entirely misplaced. Some of the supernatural realm's denizens are, well, animals, in the literal sense. Nothing is gained by trying to reason with wild creatures. Still... It's sad to see. Carrying that kind of prejudice in your heart only leads to more pain, no matter how warranted that prejudice might be. It's a sobering reminder. I must always hear both sides of a story and try to be the fairest I can be. That's my job, my duty. Albert is crouching, mumbling to himself, closely examining the ruins. I only realize I'm standing there watching him with Sammy pipes up. Your heart rate is elevated. Are you well? I'm fine, Sammy. Thank you for asking. As if remembering my present, Albert turns to me with an empty smile. Don't mind me. I'll deal with all this. You get to bed and have a good rest. There's more to the story. There always is. Tonight, however, is not the time for it. I nod and withdraw, leaving Albert to his thoughts. She saw a man doing physical labor. <gasps> <laughs> Far from home and an unfamiliar bed. I expected to toss and turn most of the night, but to my surprise, I slept like a log. Deep, dreamless, and utterly refreshing. God, wouldn't that be nice? I haven't felt that in a while. Rousing slowly, taking my time with my morning routine is a small pleasure. I make myself a simple breakfast and chase it down with a... Ah, oh, yes. Strong mug of coffee. Hmm... Later inspecting myself in the mirror, I see the strongest proof of a good night's sleep. My hair is a total mess. If I'm be meeting a powerful fairy lord today, I'd better look my best. Basic bob, silky brown, curls. Okay, so we're going to make us change our hairstyle, but not our outfit. I was fine with my hair that I had. 
Are you gonna make me change my hair? I hate you so much. Albert leads me out the back gate and down a path leading to the woods. I notice as we pass, the markings from last night have been redone in fresh white paint. So he maintains warrants to keep the fairies out. Probably a wise decision, yet as I watch him from the corner of my eye, one thing seems out of place. You're not bringing any weapons? I've got a weapon. He has his coat to reveal a hunting knife sheathed and hooked to his belt. I'd bring something bigger, but I find it's considered poor form to arrive armed to a diplomatic meeting. True enough. I leave the subject as we reach the tree line. The path continues, and as soon enclosed by the close-grown trees of the Belchester Wood. Gentle bird song, rustling leaves are soon the only sound we hear. Our steps fall into rhythm, led by Albert's steady stride. We he must have trod these paths countless times before. There's a seriousness about him too, as if there's a lot on his mind. I wonder. Should I take this opportunity? Albert. Mm. Ever so slowly, this new book will eat all my diamonds. I'm serious. Always. Always. You didn't go away to university or live abroad? No. I was always needed here. Attention enters his jaw, which makes takes some effort to relax. The knights have always been guarding the uh, Belchester Gate. Since we never know when we'll need to take up our duty, we train from a young age. I always knew I'd live and die in Belchester. You don't sound too thrilled about it. Don't I? There's an echo of the gallows in his sidelong grin. Do you feel the same about always living and working in London? Sometimes, but London is an actual city, not some pokey little village. I feel the string in his retort. I didn't say that. He passes a hand over his face. Sorry, spending all my time around Nanny, I've gotten a little too used to speaking bluntly. We let the moment pass by mutual agreement. What about the holidays? Have you ever been on holiday? No. Mother needed my help here as the guardian, and she... He pauses. She passed early. Even for a night, I only know... Uh, I was the only night left to take up the duty. I'm sorry, Albert. It's all right. This smile this time is sincere. Sad, but sincere. It's nice to have a new face to tell all this to. We pass further through the woods. He finds paths and takes shortcuts with easy familiarity, never hesitating for more than a second before forging on. You know this place well. I've spent most of my life in these woods. He turns and looks through the canopy, sunlight filters down warming his rugged face. It's not so bad here, all things considered. I felt it too. The sheer peace of the woods, surrounded by the gentle noises of nature going about its business, my heart so often weary, drained, feels like uh, just a little bit more full. Albert watches me as we navigate over a fallen tree, holding branches out of the way for me to pass. My turn now. Would you ever consider moving out of London? I'm not sure. My job is there, and, uh... A trail off. That, unfortunately, is the end of that sentence. My job is there. I don't think your job needs you to stay put as my, quite as much as mine does, Agent. The branch falls behind me as hand, helping me over a small creek that we're soon traversing as strong and self-assured in mine. Go on, indulge in the fantasy. You don't see anything appealing about the village life compared to the big city. I shoot him a smirk. I suppose it could be good with the right company. You might be on to something, Agent. As soon as you have that one special person, it doesn't matter where you are. Mm-hmm. The great curls back in on itself, requiring us to hop across a few flat rocks to cross safely. Always he's there, close at hand, ensuring my safety and safe passage. The kind of person you can always rely on. Someone to protect you and comfort you. Someone who, if you lost the whole world, you'd be okay. As long as they were there, keeping you safe. We land neatly on the other side of the water. Am I getting close? You just might be, Mr. Knight. 
Albert liked her answer, but then I'll just uh, have to keep trying until I hit the bullseye. There's a warmth that lingers even when he looks away from me and locates the next path. Not much further. I do one last glance and he strikes out ahead. Somehow I feel like he's standing straighter. More's the pity. Is there going to be a troll under this bridge? The path opens to a small clearing, run through by the same stream, wider here than the many other places. The sagging bows of massive oaks dapple the ground and water with spots of sunlight. Despite there being nothing but dirt paths leading to and from, a stone bridge has been built here over the water. What an odd place for a bridge. Did there used to be something here? Not used to be. There's something here. Albert steps onto the bridge, a hand absently coming down to touch the hilt of his knife. This is the gate. This? Where? Albert runs his fingers over the mossy stones, briefly lost in thought. Right in the middle. You can't just walk straight into the supernatural realm, though. There's a trick to it. His snuggles wrap on the particular stone near the apex of the bridge's arch. Knock three times, turn winder skins. That's anti-clockwise, and then step backwards two paces. Okay, let me get this. Knock three times, turn clockwise. So, are you? How far back are we turning? And then two, just in case I have to remember this shit. And then two steps backwards. I squint at the air behind Albert, there's nothing. Not even the shimmer of something hidden. You don't believe me. Albert leans against the bridge and gestures to me. Ask your little robot friend, then. It has a name. Regardless, I do as he says. Uh, Sammy, is there a gate anywhere around here, and if so, why can't I see it? Confirm, the Belchester Gate is logged to be in this vicinity. The gate is permanent portal between the mundane and supernatural realms. It is invisible to the mundane eye, but can be traversed with the correct procedure. As of the Knight's family, last report three weeks ago, the gate is fully functioning and safe to travel. Well, there you go. I step carefully onto the bridge. Even more carefully, I wave my fingers through the air just behind Albert, testing the area. I don't feel anything. Invisible and intangible until you do the ritual, anyway. Odd little ritual. Albert shrugs. I didn't make it up. All I know is it works. I pull, I puff out of breath for all my years of work. I rarely visit the supernatural realm, and I certainly have never had the chance to visit a fairy forest. Displaced creatures, hidden beasts, folks of magical origin trying to live their lives. Those are the faces that make up my cases. Stepping through an invisible portal to an unknown land? Now that... I'm on the precipice. I'm nervous. I must show it on my face, for Albert C. sets a steadying hand on my shoulder. We'll do it together. I steal myself and nod. Albert now wraps his knuckles on a particular stone again. Three times. I follow his example. We turn in a circle. Anti-clockwise. Witter shins, as he said. And I step backwards. And the world blossoms or blooms into light. Mmm, flashbang. <laughs> really? Okay, fine. Complete the episode. Aw, no diamonds. Sadness. Alright, so three empathy, zero efficiency, because we're not very efficient at our work. One expertise, and I guess we got 30 diamonds, I'm assuming? Alright, so... Hold on. All right, so I went ahead and got my uh, diamonds uh, for the, you know, the every 30 minutes thing. Make sure to always do that with how many bloody diamonds that they ask of you, but otherwise. <laughs> Looks like there is an episode two for this. Uh, so first and foremost, before I begin to give my feedback real quick, uh, please remember that if you did enjoy the content to like, share, and subscribe. Um, especially if you enjoyed me doing the reading, uh, the who, what, when, where, and why of all this. And just, you know, doing something that out of the whole entire planet, 
no one else is doing. So do have some value to that. I, I try and bring something unique and, well, just unique to the table and something that hopefully you do enjoy. Um, <clears throat> aside from that, let's get to it. I enjoyed this. Um, as I said in the in the story, and I'll just keep this short and sweet, there's a lot of things that I've been through in my life that are supernatural. And then the cool part is, is I actually used to live in a town. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It's called Yellow Springs. Um, you guys should really look it up, but it's uh, in Ohio. I used to live right by it uh, for pretty much most of my life. And they, in that town, they believed in a lot of really cool things and things that you would just raise your eyebrow to in the whole nine yards. But um, you were just taught not to really just be judgmental or whatnot, right? Um, and there were a lot of supernatural things. Like, we literally had spots in the woods that were dedicated to wood fairies, and um, there were wood fairy celebrations, and there were a lot of other things that we would do um, in this massive, protected, by the way, wooded area. Um, like, there's woods and, and trees and everything else all over the city. It's very beautiful. And the energy there is so just... Let's put it this way. I don't know if you guys have ever went outside and, like, walked through the woods, right? It's There's, like, an energy, right? I'm sure that you, thinking about it, you realize it, right? Now, imagine there is massive forest that is dedicated to the possibility of supernatural things existing. And so the energy in this place just... I was the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life. Like, I just felt amazing there. I, I just never have felt even remotely close to that um, as, as I did there. And, you know, in all honesty, I wouldn't mind uh, moving literally and figuratively to that city. I don't know. Maybe things would change for me. But aside from that, um, I actually really, really did enjoy it, living there. And so... Um, and I would always visit and travel through there on my bike rides and, and whatnot, but typically with a lot of normies, <laughs> you don't share your, your supernatural things because you, people turn their nose up at you, right? And especially with me, with a lot of things that I've had to experience through my life. And then if you add into the, you know, the supernatural stories and whatnot, people just look at you and go, yeah, I think you're crazy. <laughs> So, um, I, I've shared a couple little breadcrumbs and stories throughout my life with people here and there, but typically they have to open up to me first for me to, to share my stories. Just someone who's like, yeah, no, I've gone through some stuff myself. Here's one particular thing. I'm like, oh, cool. I, I, I did or did not experience something similar to that. And, um, you know, go from there is, you know, it's like sharing interests and, you know, meeting someone and then becoming friends or whatnot. It's just like that. But, yeah, no. Um, typically, you're not like, hey, guys, I had this experience. You know, I don't know. I'm just not that type of person. Um, but, yeah, no. So far, I'm digging the story. I, I'm always in, enchanted, enthralled, and things like this. And it's always interesting to see people spin on things and, and whatnot. So I actually kind of do enjoy it. So, again, if you do want more of it, let me know in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your anything, everything. Let me know how your day is. I don't care. I always love reading your comments. Thanks again for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.